Hi there, this is Jeb Adams. I'd like to welcome first time and returning. Today I'm going to be disassembling the needle thread tension device right here. And I'm going to take it apart, put them down here and discuss how they work and then put them back in. Open this and I'm going to Get a little closer with the, and the, what I'm gonna be dealing with today is this screw here. This screw here, it tightens on to the needle thread tension stud. And so if I wanna take this off, all I have to do is undo this. If you're a beginner to sewing or sewing machines or restoration, welcome to you also. So, and here we have the, the beautiful 500J, Singer 500J needle thread tension apparatus device. The thread guide is here. When the discs are on and the thread comes down to here, it goes right in between the second and third discs. If you count them from the front, one, two, three, the second and third discs are the two discs closest to the, to the casting, to the body. Anyway, moving right along. So I loosen it and that's loosened enough. That's loosened enough. I'm gonna move the camera down here a little. We'll move those out of the way. We'll get just a tad closer maybe. No, we'll go back a bit. So this is the adapter. You could even call it the needle thread tension adapter to be official and technical. And what it does is it butts up against the, by the way, this is called the dial or number dial. Sorry, there is the tension adapter and it butts up against the stop washer. There. Next we have everybody's favorite, the beehive spring, which is actually called, believe it or not, the tension spring. <laughs> how, how wonderful is that? Here we have, what we have here is the plus minus indicator or the minus plus indicator. We see a minus sign, a vertical, bar and then a plus sign. So this is called, usually just called the, the plus minus indicator. Uh, the important thing about this is that it goes on that way. So you have this open end where the other parts go in from the, and this is where the pin in the tension stud hits the device to loosen the discs so we can move things around this part right here with the spring and the discs and the thread guide and uh, not and I'm not including the actually I should take the the stud out of there then if I'm not going to include it. So we'll just put the tension stud and the pin that's within it. We'll put them right there. So this spring and the three discs and the thread, thread guard, because it guards the threads once they're in the discs there, they are called the tension disc assembly. Just those one, two, three, four, five pieces along. So we'll take them apart just for the fun of it. Move these back here. Put that there. Oops, it is, I lost some of my parts. And then we have the three discs and the tension, the, the thread guard. So, so to put them together, we're going to get the, I'm going to get the, 
the stud we can see the pin there peeking out and there we can see it peeking out the other end it gets pushed by the presser bar take up lever and when it gets pushed in it comes and it goes all through those things that have circles and that's where the pin contacts pushes this forward away from the sewing machine and loosens up the discs so that you can move your thread around to get going with your sewing. So I'm just going to put that in there right now, just correctly like that. Oopsie daisy, sorry. And I'm going to snug that up a little. Then we take the, the take up spring is what Singer calls this back then. A lot of people called it uh, take up spring, I guess. <laughs> A lot of people called it the check spring. But anyway, I would like it to be hanging down. Um, this is not the way it's going on, but I'd like it to be hanging down kind of like that when I am finished here. So. I get those because there are three discs they can face any way in any combination they all do the same thing regardless of their position it all works and then I get the thread guard and the thread guard excuse me the thread guard there's a, a hole there in the thread guide which that thing is and that's where the thread guide um, pin goes. So, but the thread guide goes in there and is covered by that spring. That's the proper position. Now we get the tension guide needle thread tension indicator. And it's called the indicator because of the plus and minus. So we're going to put that on there. And we want the plus and minus up there. And we want the end, open end of this, this device facing here so that we can apply the beautiful beehive spring, which is the tension spring. Well, I'll put that there. That's seated a little better. I didn't have that seated all the way in there. And then we take the needle tension, needle thread tension stop washer. That's a technical name, stop washer. And it stops the beehive spring from moving any uh, further forward. This is the needle thread tension adapter. And it, it threads on and it stops the stop washer from moving. Quite often these can be a little bit of a, a second or two to, to get the threading correct because quite often people try to take this apart and they try to turn that tension spring while it's still seated. And sometimes the adapter suffers, I don't know why. So that's on. Now we have the needle thread tension indicator. A lot of people call it the number indicator. And there is a little raised part there. And it goes on the left side, I believe, of that little tab on the stop washer. So zero should be Nine should be, am I doing this right here? Oopsie daisy seems, whoopsie daisy. Maybe I've got to let this out a little for now. So it goes on like that. And then I tighten up 
that little screw that keeps the indicator in place. Just enough to tighten it. This other one, I think we tightened it sufficiently. Oh yeah, it's snug. <laughs>